Buffett's rule of thumb for selling stocks. Whether or not to sell an investment may be somewhat perplexing. Do you sell it because the price has increased, allowing you to make a profit? Do you decide to sell it because the price has dropped so that you may minimize your losses? Or maybe you should sell it since its value has stagnated even though all of your pals are becoming wealthy trading Bitcoin. The good news is that Warren Buffett, known as the Oracle of Omaha and the Sage of Securities, has us covered regarding this topic. The most successful investor in the history of the world has shared his thoughts on the art of selling on several different occasions. In the following video, you will discover three real-world scenarios in which it is appropriate to liquidate your holdings in the stock market in the way of Warren Buffett. By the way, you're probably going about this incorrectly if you have been paying attention to what Warren Buffett has had to say on this subject more lately. This is the Swedish Investor, where we provide you with the most helpful advice and resources for achieving financial independence by investing in the stock market. Before we go into the three different circumstances in which you should sell a stock, let's first talk about why the main guy in the introduction gets his selling so incorrect. This is because he places excessive importance on the price he pays. Warren Buffett states, yeah, one of the crucial things with stocks is that the stock does not know that you own it. You are experiencing a wide range of emotions due to it. You can recall the amount that you paid. You can put a name to the person who informed you about it. You are aware of all these little details, right? And it doesn't give a damn about anything if you know what I mean. It is not moving in any way. And if you know a stock at 50, somebody's paid 100 and they feel bad about it, it's a catch 20. They are feeling good even though someone else paid 10. All of these emotions yet, it has no bearing whatsoever on the situation. Okay, so if the fact that a stock has gone up, down, or is just going sideways shouldn't have any effect on your choice to sell it, what should have that kind of influence? The first circumstance in which Warren Buffett would consider selling is the following. When something more desirable comes along. You cannot invest the same amount of money in the shares of business B after you have invested your money in company A. This might force you to make some difficult choices. For example, you could have to give up a firm that you generally like to pursue something else that is even more satisfying. There's an excerpt from the letter that Warren Buffett sent to his partners in the Buffett Partnership Limited in 1959 when he transitioned from working from the Bank Commonwealth Trust to joining Sanborn Maps a company that specialized in mapping. At the tail end of the year, we were fortunate to find a unique circumstance in which we could become the biggest holder at an attractive price. As a result, we sold our block of Commonwealth and received $80 per share. We should probably note that whoever purchases the stock at $80 has a good chance of doing reasonably well over the years. However, the relative undervaluation at $80 with an intrinsic value of $135 is quite different from a price of $50 with an intrinsic value of $125. It seemed that our capital could be employed more effectively in the situation that replaced it. In the former scenario, the price was $50 and the asset's intrinsic value was $125. If you've been following the more recent advice that Warren Buffett has given, here's where you could have made a mistake with the sales that you've been making. Even if he anticipates that his wholly owned firms would provide below average returns on investment, he will not sell them at this time. Listening to the suggestion that Warren Buffett's preferred holding term is forever might be a little bit deceiving since it is not entirely accurate. These days, holding forever is just a personal choice of his. However, he places far more value on the emotional ties he has been able to create with the management of the subsidiaries at Berkshire Hathaway than he does on generating a few additional percentage points of return. To break off relationships with people that you like and people that have joined me because they think it is a permanent home, to do that simply because somebody waves a big check at me would be equivalent to selling one of your children simply because someone waves an extensive review at me so that you won't do that. In addition, we want to reassure your business partners that you will not go through with it so they do not feel let down by me. Buffett's owner's manual for Berkshire Hathaways was first sent to Berkshire stockholders in the form of an annual shareholder letter in 1983. Nevertheless, this line of thought on Buffett's part dates back far longer than that. 
please take a look at what he had to say about the collaboration in a letter that was written in 1968. As we have stated previously, we can't generate the same amount of revenue from the long-term ownership of controlled businesses as we can generate either from the purchase and subsequent resale of controlled companies or from the savvy investment in marketable securities. Despite this, they provide a pleasurable activity that can be carried out throughout a lengthy period in collaboration with persons of high caliber and ability and give reasonable rates of return. After having some negative experiences with Dempster Mill manufacturing in the early 1960s, Buffett's penchant for buying and reselling existing enterprises began to shift. Buffett earned the enmity of a whole community when he purchased the area's major employer, cut expenses, and eliminated employment to increase the company's potential profit before selling it. However, let's look at his partnership letter from 1961, when he also operated with less capital. We'll see what we suspect Buffett would suggest other smaller investors do. Our bread and butter business is buying undervalued securities and selling them when the undervaluation is corrected. It has nothing to do with you, Sonny. This is just for commercial purposes. Another circumstance in which Warren Buffett could choose to sell an investment is the following. When there is a significant shift in how a company operates economically, our natural inclination is to avoid selling any of our wares, but there are a few circumstances under which we might consider doing so. These include situations in which we become highly disheartened with the company's management or believe that the company's financial characteristics have significantly shifted. And by the way, this does take place. Consider the following significant shifts in the market environment that has traditionally prompted Warren Buffett to sell his holdings. Due to the coronavirus, he decided to sell his holdings in a handful of the leading airline businesses in the year 2020. He said that the world has changed for airlines as a reason for his decision. In 2014, Buffett divested himself of one of his most significant assets in the history of the world, the newspaper, the Washington Post. Buffett said throughout several years that the environment in which newspapers operate had evolved and that Berkshire Post did not have the same competitive advantages as it had when the company bought it in 1973. In the end, he decided to let it go. Then there is Buffett's investment in the supermarket giant Tesco. In the end, Buffett agreed to sell his stake in the firm because he disagreed with the management of the business, but he doesn't go into specifics about why he had this disagreement. By 2014, he had left the role and he had incurred a marginal loss overall. On a more personal level, if I had known about this some years ago, I may have been able to avoid making one of the biggest selling blunders I've ever made when it comes to investing. It's finished. On the other hand, if I bring this up, fundamental shifts don't occur very often. In his annual letter to the shareholders of Berkshire Hathaway from 1997, Buffett hints at this fact when he notes that selling good firms based on scary news is often a poor option. Finally, Buffett is all for having a concentrated portfolio. However, sometimes you must also sell or at the very least cut down on your holdings. One such case is the following. When a single holding becomes excessive in size, you should not put all of your eggs in one basket, as the age-old proverb advises. But you don't have to be as stringent with this rule as the majority of people propose. If you have a limited number of investments in your portfolio, you will have more capital to invest in a single security. Consider that in 1967, when Warren Buffett was managing more than the equivalent of $500 million today, he had 40% of the money collected by his partnership invested in American Express. After reaching a point when he exceeded the 40% limit restriction, he decided to reduce the size of his investment to continue to practice some diversification. By the way, Warren Buffett's commitment to American Express is just the fourth biggest of his career. Again, the individual who speaks at the introduction of this film is incorrect because he concentrates on the cost of the item. Stock does not care in the least about the price you paid. Asking yourself, if I didn't already own the stock, would I still want to invest today? Is a constructive question. If not, you should probably consider selling what you have. A tight relationship between wanting to maintain and purchase more of that stock, wishing to retain stock, and wanting to buy more of that stock is not the same thing. They are not the same since having to pay taxes on your earnings and incurring transaction fees when you sell a stock to acquire something else are linked with having to sell a stock. This is why they are not the same thing. As a result, 
there is a narrow space between the zone that says buy more and the zone that says sell. This might be referred to as the do nothing zone, a very underrated zone in the modern world of investing. If you've discovered something better, something fundamental has changed, or single holding is too huge, you should consider selling some of your stocks. You are now familiar with the process of selling. This is a lengthy movie with a lot of helpful information for you to consume if you are interested in learning more about the criteria that Warren Buffett considers essential when deciding which stocks to purchase. You'll get an education on the 25 investments that Warren Buffett believes to be his most significant right here. You will understand the state of these assets when you purchase them. Thank you, and we look forward to catching up with you all very soon. I hope you liked and learned something from today's video. If you want to keep improving and being inspired, subscribe and press the bell button to be alerted whenever we upload a video. This has been Market Profits Institute.